John, I apologize. John Roberts actually should be here doing this. He's the executive director for International Grooving and Grinding Association. He's actually got a staff affection. It, it's serious business. So um, he's, he's trying to recover. So we'll beg some indulgence there. We don't need to talk. You know, like I said, you can see the, the thing to note here is you've got a connection between IGGA and ACPA. And that's an important thing to notice. And I'm connected the same way. So we're, we're uh, alliances. What he's showing you here is, as, as you look back in time, it wasn't that long ago that noise and ride quality and friction, um, those things weren't as important because everybody was designing or debating over structural thickness. And then the consumer got more involved and they got a little bit more aggressive with the uh, industry and the, the, the DOTs. I, I'm retired Arizona DOT and I was involved in when we covered up the concrete pavement in, in Phoenix. And I can tell you within three months we went from owning the system to having people just all over us on uh, quality of life issues. So that, that's kind of what this slide is showing. Just so you know, again, this is, this is bragging if you're grinder, the Bristol Motor Speedway actually uses diamond grinding for the surface. So again, that's what he's trying to promote. And if you also notice, if you've ever driven or been to NASCAR track, notice the angle on some of those things. So imagine the guy who's got to take a 60,000 pound machine and keep it uh, from coming down that uh, cross slope. So. So the reaction from transportation agencies with specifiers placed greater emphasis on noise, smoothness, and construction delays. Develop tighter smoothness and friction requirements. And I can tell you there's at least two states going down on new construction smoothness into the 30s. And you know, five years ago, we wouldn't even been having those kind of discussions. So there is more and more emphasis on those kind of things. Develop low noise surface treatments, increase use of sound walls, and safety concerns are still paramount, and then we'll get into some of those textures. Historically, you know, surface characteristics, you don't usually get in too many debates, but every once in a while, there's always subtle reminders about how important it is, and if you've ever been involved in one of those, you never forget that. So the, when the people come in and haven't been involved, it, it seems like easier, but when uh, things like that happen, life gets bad really, really quick. I mentioned, if you were here right at the end of the last session, um, this is the 125th anniversary of the first concrete pavement ever placed in the United States, 1891, Bell Fountain, Ohio. Uh, that's a picture of Courtyard, which is actually 1893, but we think we're clever today, but that system, it was five inches thick, was a two lift system, more economical aggregate used in a top, and it had four by four texturing because back then the roads weren't built for automobiles, but for horses. So they had almost like a brick pattern in them. So again, we think a lot of these things, texture, friction, are issues uh, that are new. They're, they're really not. <clears throat> uh, diamond soft cut textures, and I'm going to give you examples of a number of these, but increasingly specifiers are utilizing diamond saw cut services to improve ride, reduce noise, and increase, increase the friction of their pavements and bridges. And you can see the, the promotional things, economic, long lasting. Um, I'm gonna, when I get to one of them, I'm going to show you uh, where the industry actually developed the technology. And I'm not going to ask again because hopefully most of the people saw it, but that's the machine. There's no uh, roll-ups falling over in front of it. But these are specially built machines and they're a lot more capable today than they were just about 10 or 12 years ago. So you're seeing a lot more capability on, on being able to produce these services. Again, you can either have a single machine going down the road if it, you know, you've got a system with low volume traffic. When you have high volume traffic in urban areas, you'll see multiple machines. So your window is going to, of work window is going to dictate what, how much equipment they have to bring out there. So they can bring lots of machines that they have to. Again, what this is showing, notice this is just a single machine, but the minute that guy pulls off the road, you can pull down the cones and traffic can drive on it. So that's one of the advantages of the diamond grinding process. Again, the same thing you can, I don't know if you can, notice but that's where they left off last have actually switched it was kind of an odd layout i thought but i'm sure there was a reason for it the other thing i thought was interesting is i don't get to see too many tractors going down the shoulder and i, I don't know I, i'd looked at this slide a couple times before i ever realized that so when i talk about saw cut textures we're really looking at we call it cdg conventional diamond grinding and up until we came up with the next generation which i'll show you a little later on there was never a need to have cdg because Diamond grinding was like one form of, of treatment, and we've now got several forms. So when we say CDG, that's, that's what's typical. Longitudinal safety grooving was developed in Cal California in the 1960s as a safety measure. 
Again, then dimensional diamond grinding with grooving, so that's just combining two and then the next generation. And I'll show you pictures of these. This is a ground level shot. I, if I had to guess, I don't know where that's at. I was gonna say, but I don't. Um, so what you're looking at is a corduroy texture. On all of these textures I'm gonna be talking about, it's longitudinally based. Understand the industry in the middle 2000s really had to lean on states to get them away from transverse tining. That was the most popular uh, texture and it was a noise issue. There's just absolutely no way you're gonna do it without creating noise issues. Um, so this reduces noise just because it's longitudinal. It also provides resistance from the tire when a vehicle gets out of control. You've got some lateral stability enhancement there. Okay, so I'm just gonna let you look through some of that. You know, the, the big thing is on these kind of textures, what you, you focus on, on the wet weather accident reduction. That's where most of the data's at. Um, the other thing I mentioned, look at the bottom one, we grind as much asphalt as concrete, and we don't usually talk about it. In fact, on our exhibit, that was on our comments, we should have had the runs go all out into the asphalt so you can see that, and we didn't even think about it at the time. Okay, um, this is more complicated than it needs to be. Where your saw blades go, it goes right here, and where this is a little thing, this is what sticks up. Let me go back here, too. So these dark grooves are where the saw blades are, and this is the part that's coming up. We call that the land, and that land is being shown right there. So I control that height and the width by my blade spacing. Those of you remember when I was talking about blade spacing, so it's not really more complicated than that. You couldn't see the head yesterday in that machine, so this would, on the machine you saw yesterday, this would be horizontally where I was talking about the profile wheels, but that's what it looks like. And here's your two cutting blades, side by side, separated by a spacer. So all this volume right here is where the water is circulating, cooling the blades, and removing the debris. So it's, it's not rocket science. There's a lot goes in what's the, on the grinder, the critical part is this portion of the blade right there called the segment. That's where the real science and art goes in so they can get production, and that's why I was talking, they have to match the machine to your road and those kind of things. Again, this is, picture of the head, that's a very similar machine to the one you had yesterday, I think that's. Um, what this is really showing you is how much you improve texture. How many people here run the sand patch test? Not many. What you do, Scott, if you're in Scott Steel, you, you, you pour glass beads or silica sand and then you take a little hockey puck and uh, smash it down and if you have almost no texture, you get a much wider, you measure the diameter, it's much wider than when you have texture. So this is just showing before and after diamond grinding and it's actually increasing the macro texture on that pavement. <coughs> and it says increased macro texture of diamond grinding surface provides improved drainage. The, the wet weather accident reduction is, is our strength. So just, just so you don't, if I screw you up on everything else, don't miss that message and there's, there's lots of data to show that. Um, then this directional stability I was talking to you about before, sometimes this comes in the fact that the road's trying to drive my car and people complain about it. But the reason they feel that kind of condition is because it is giving a, a, that kind of uh, ability. Particularly when you're looking at groove roads, it gives the water a way to escape. And if you ever get in noise arguments, which I spend a lot of time in, everyone will say, well, you should be doing all this stuff transverse because it's more efficient. Even the tire manufacturers move most of the water in a circumferential direction because they would have issues with noise if they did everything transverse. So there is a balance. It's not that it can't be done or one's better than the other. The question is what gives you the best of all worlds? And it can be done. So that's the advantage of the longitudinal. Um, one of the studies here probably 15 years ago was Wisconsin. Their overall accident rates for ground service were 40% less than front ground services on a six year study. So like I said, there is data out there and you can see the, the big improvements on the wet weather accident. I'm gonna show you one here from California pretty quick. I believe this is actually Nashville. There's is Matt back there. So, Jeff, hit Matt. Is that Nashville? Yeah, he took the picture, that's what I was asking, thank you. <laughs> um, and again, this is, you can see the corduroy texture when people talk about that. It probably predates most of you guys, but we used to wear corduroy pants, so. Um, again, showing the same thing on asphalt. I don't know if you can see it, but you've got corduroy texture here also. What we call safety grooving, you saw that demonstrated yesterday. 
Um, and it's basically using the same kind of diamond blades. You just space them typically three quarters on center. So instead of having very narrow uh, spacing, you have a large spacing. And you're essentially just building a channel. Okay, so that gives the water someplace escape. The same way with your tire on the contact patch, what you're trying to do is remove all the water from out from underneath that tire. The quicker and faster you can do that, the safer it is. The other advantage is your tire tread actually goes into some embedment in those grooves. And that's where the lateral stability comes from. So there's, there's two functions there. Again, it can be done either transverse or longitudinal. On airfields, they do transverse because that's the most efficient removal of, of water. But they don't have a noise issue because you can't hear anything over the engine. So it, it's a non-issue. You get on highways, even on bridge decks, there's still a lot of structural people who insist on transverse grooving. There's probably as much or more of that than longitudinal, but you will always have a noise issue. There's an advantage from a grinding side on transverse. It's easier to get up close to barriers, but they're getting ways around that to be able to do better on longitudinal. But there is more in probably the last four or five years, a lot of movement to longitudinal grooving on decks as opposed to transverse. <coughs> and John was trying to get the message. It's very inexpensive. Grooving is the cheapest of the, of the grinding products. Yeah, it's same equipment, same process. This is the exact same, you know, this is what I showed you earlier. Remember the lands and where the blades are coming in? The only difference is now we've got them spaced three quarters center to center. So the head I showed you before for conventional diamond grinding looks like this. That's what a grooving head. So notice, you, like I said, these should be three quarters of an inch apart. Obviously, they can't generate as much torque, so speeds are different. All those kind of things come into play. Um, you know, cooling them is a non-issue because you've got more water than you ever need to what to do with. This was a, you know, I'm always humbled by the the old days. To be real honest with you, it's like I'm sweating with light drinking my coffee. This is an old California Highway Department accident diagram, and this is what people used to do in the old days. And each one of these is like a police report with a real accident, and they've laid it all out. And this is they're the ones who develop longitudinal grooving, and you can see the date on there. And so after they did the grooving, this is see how much one is the number of accident reductions, but also the type of accident reduction. And so that's pretty hard data to come by anymore because people don't really want to talk about accidents too well. So from the industry side, a lot of our stuff is old because they used to publish that stuff and today people don't like to do it. But again, what, when you have a curve, you notice a lot of these are run off the road accidents. So they have too low a friction. We don't know if it's hydroplaning or wet friction. We don't, we don't really know the cause. But a lot of them are the run off the road. So as soon as you get lateral stability, then they, they, don't, they can negotiate that curve. Okay, I'll read this one to you because I'm pretty sure you can't. This is the actual reports if you want to go back and check. But basically, um, what they looked at was a 20% reduction in total accidents. So that's dry and wet. 50% reduction in fatal accidents. Again, that's dry and wet. And then a 70% reduction in wet pavement accidents. This was all... Uh, California Highway Department work in like so the late 60s and early 70s. And again, you see the same thing on runways except it's going this way. What you're trying to show here is when you don't have the grooves to drain the water off, you can see it's, it's somewhat dramatic. For airplanes, that wouldn't be as big of a deal, but for highways, that would be a really big deal. Um, you probably can't see this. Can anybody tell that that's grooved in the back? Answer's gotta be no, or you got better eyes than me because I can barely tell you. But again, it's just, it's no different than diamond grinding. You just have the grooves. I've shown you that. Um, let's see what we get in here. One application that's pretty important is right here. If you got live in the Midwest or someplace where you have very soft limestone that polishes in five or six years, the easiest way to remedy a safety issue is longitudinal grooving. And if you test with a rib tire, you won't measure much of that improvement. But if you measure with a smooth tire, ASTM E274, you'll see a huge kick bump up because of that, because it, what the smooth tires are counting for the macro texture increase that, that goes on. Next one is um, when you combine conventional uh, diamond grinding with safety grooving, again, you can see the texture. So this is the conventional diamond grinding right here with the safety grooving in between. Next generation concrete surface was a uh, product developed at Purdue University. And to this day, this was done in 2007. Um, this is the quietest non-porous concrete surface developed. 
It was developed on their tire uh, pavement test apparatus, and you can see it's got grooves also. The grooves are not for noise. I get questions on that all the time. There's people telling me, well, it's quiet because of grooves. The grooves aren't there for noise at all. The idea, what Purdue found was when you have texture that goes up, we call that positive or upward texture, that tire pavement interaction is what creates the noise. So they said, if you can make it smooth, you'll have less noise. They did it, and it worked, and so that, that birthed the new technology. This is just another tool in the toolbox. It's not meant to replace anything, but if you have to have the quietest concrete pavement you're, you're gonna get, this is what you, you should go to. And he's got it up there emphasized. Again, same equipment, same blades. The only thing that's different is the spacers between the blades. The spacers between the blades on this head are only 30 to 35 thousandths. Now, when this was first done, I told you it was developed at the tire pavement test apparatus at, at Purdue. So they're only grinding eight inches wide, six feet long, and the guy's got a hose cooling the head as he grinds. So our grinder said, well, yeah, that's cool. That works really good but that'll never be possible on a highway because there's about $60,000 of blades on one of those heads. And their thing was, the minute we could start going down the road, that head's gonna burn up, and you just cost me $60,000. So they weren't running in for, to build field test sections. Um, as, and again, the reason being is like me telling you, take the radio out of your car, you can go faster, but you're, my car will burn up. And so there was a lot of initial resistance, and we just had to get into it little by little, small sections, and it turns out it's not an issue. But at the time, I can tell you, there's a lot of people never thought it could be done, and it, it's really a non-issue. Um, this is showing you the conventional, again, you're probably tired of looking at heads, where you see the little gap, dark gaps, that's where the spacers are. These are actually the grooving blades. NGCS can be installed in a single pass for both the grinding and grooving, or as a double pass. This happens to be a single pass head, so just ignore these grooving blades like this. But look how close these guys are here. It doesn't even look like there's spacers in there. And that's why the industry folks have said you'll never be able to grind that way. And what you have is a resulting texture that has both macro textures, what we're showing right here, and then micro texture. That's off of Minroads. Uh, Minnesota DOT was extremely helpful and then the first all the uh, some of the uh, most earliest test sections were done up there this is Duluth Minnesota on I-35 from one end of the town to the other on their interstate is a next generation concrete surface got a spectacular view out there that was one of the cool things today you've got 14 different states that have actually installed uh, next generation surfaces it used to be Minnesota was the lead and then California became the lead and this year Texas just dominated everybody going uh, they got lots of funding, so they're, they're building a lot and uh, doing that. This, this is a mean texture depth and different pavements. Uh, this is off of Kansas's I-70 project. What, uh, this is actually my slide. What I normally show, notice on a burlap drag, what this is showing you is the mean texture depth of uh, 0.3 millimeters. It just so happens that a lock wheel skid trailer has a half a millimeter film thickness of water, it'd be taller than that texture. So that texture is not going to be a good wet weather surface. As you go up higher and higher in value, you'll have more and more resistance. You're moving the water out. That's the idea. But what's not fair here, and I'm a strong proponent of NGCS, but I can change this value by making my grooves deeper. So this number alone, it will work great for water removal, but it's not necessarily a fair comparison because you notice this was also a grooved one, so my guess is these grooves are probably deeper than these grooves, or else I would have expected both of those to be the same. It's just downward texture. But this shows the advantages of, of groove surfaces, whether it be NGCS or safety grooving. As long as you have grooves there, that water's gonna be able to escape. This is off of the CP Tech Center when they were looking into the, no the noise, because early on, and this goes back to the early 2000s, people thought quiet pavements would have bad friction. And so what this looks like is a shotgun blast, and what that's showing you is there's no relationship necessarily between noise and friction. You can have a quiet pavement with good friction. It's not, but I can tell you just 10 years ago, many people in the highway industry actually thought that. Um, this again is looking at that same Kansas section. This is IGJ friction data. And what you see where you have the blue, that's a smooth test tire. This is ASTM E274, 40 miles an hour. The yellow are the rib tire. So what you like to see when you have NGCS or conventional diamond grind, you'll notice 
uh, let me back up. Come over here to conventionally longitudinally time. Notice the smooth tire is lower than the rib tire, which is the yellow one. That's typically how most textures test, but the so, uh, diamond ground sod textures, it's either close, this is, this is farther off than most. Most of the time they're about the same, but in the NGCS, in this instance, it's actually higher. But notice over here, exposed aggregate did really well. But look how low this drag texture is. Remember the one I was showing you that didn't have very much mean texture depth? It's not performing all that well compared to the others, just with a half a millimeter of water. So if I had a millimeter, would it be even worse? But again, that's showing the advantages of macro texture. This is um, California SR58. This is 10 years old. Again, the only, I'm not, these are different textures. But what I'm trying to show you here, right here, is the same section with and without grooves. So without grooves, here's where you're at. You go in and groove that section. And look how much that number increases. And come over here. This is a really bad one. That, that one, this is on an interstate roadway, by the way. I was kind of surprised how low these values were. Um, but look when you groove it, how much improvement it made. So if you have an issue with wet weather accidents or you have an issue with um, friction and you can't solve it just with conventional diamond grinding, grooving will get it. So, TechSot, what, what this is, is looking at a project where they, uh, instead of doing an asphalt overlay, they did uh, conventional grinding. And what he's showing you is in their estimation, they saved $3 million by doing that. Uh, they improved the texture by 0.6 millimeters, cold friction by, you know, essentially 0.14. Skid number improved by 13. Uh, roughness was 44 inches per mile, and the pavement noise was reduced 3 point TB. So plus saving $3 million. So that's, like I said, that's where that slides in there. Okay, so in summary, it's a challenging time for the transportation industry. Money's never going to get plentiful. And if you've been around a long time, you realize we, do, we keep talking about what we're going to do with our, our networks, but we seem to have less and less money. Motorists are increasingly interested in it. I'm trying to think who was just talking about, I guess it was in a chip sale session, the bicyclists are coming on. It's like everyone's got, a, got an issue with payments, so it's like you can't win. But the diamond saw cut textures, I gave you a number of them along, the safety grooving, uh, conventional diamond grinding, you've got NGCS, they all have... Uh, the ability to go in there and be done quickly, you know, relatively cheaply, and you're not consuming any resources to do it. So that is it. Well, thank you.